A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you have whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, <coughs> that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the ends of times of universal rest restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, Lord our God, our God how, how wonderful, wonderful is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord our God, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O oh oh Lord, Lord our God, God how, wonderful how wonderful is your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O oh Lord, Lord our God, how wonderful, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O oh oh Lord, Lord our God, God how, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. 
that they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do you question in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was an undergraduate at Notre Dame, there were no such things there as fraternities, certainly not sororities since it was an all-male school then. So I have to say that when it comes to fraternities and sororities, it's all Greek to me. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I have no clue, absolutely, what the letters of any of these fraternities and sororities stand for, if they stand for anything at all. I think sometimes they just kind of pull Greek letters out of a hat, with the possible exception of Phi Beta Kappa, which at least can be translated, and it means philosophia biu Kubernetes, which means the love of wisdom is the guiding principle of your life. That's kind of nice. The rest of them, I don't know. So I could just say here, here is something I want you to pay attention to. Okay, ready? Delta Epsilon Iota. Sounds like I've just made up a Christian fraternity. And maybe I should, because that's the Greek word dei, which means it is necessary. And that word, by implication, appeared in both our first reading today in the gospel and throughout in Luke particularly and Mark. It was necessary for the Christ to suffer. That is one of the most awesome individual words in the entirety of our New Testament. It was necessary. And so Peter and John and the other apostles are letting the people know, okay, we know you, had, you did this in ignorance, but it was to fulfill what was necessary. It was to fulfill, fulfill what is necessary. Here, we're going to tell you that the Christ had to suffer. It was necessary to suffer. Everything written about me in the Law of Moses had to be fulfilled. It must have been fulfilled. So one of the things that we understand then is that God's plan, bizarre and unimaginable, bizarre and unimaginable, involved the cross, and it involved the resurrection, and it involves us now. It's all necessary. It's all good, and thanks be to God. Let us stand and pray. 